Good afternoon. The Secretary General will update you uh, on today's meetings and then we'll have time for a few questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. Uh, we have just finished a meeting on Afghanistan uh, with all our operational uh, partners in the uh, rescue support uh, uh, mission. NATO remains uh, committed and we continue to support the Afghan security forces with uh, training and uh, with uh, uh, funding. This helps uh, the Afghan forces stronger so they can fight international terrorism and create the conditions for uh, peace. We discussed uh, last month's um, presidential election and I welcome that the Afghan forces played a key role in providing security for their vote. All parties should now exercise calm and restraint and uh, as the electoral bodies work to determine the result. We also discussed uh, prospects uh, for the peace process in Afghanistan. NATO supported uh, the peace talks uh, earlier this year and I would welcome them uh, being resumed. But in order to make that possible, the Taliban need to demonstrate real willingness to make real compromises, to reach a credible uh, peace deal. <laughs> Over the past uh, two years, defense ministers have addressed a number of other issues for our shared uh, security. <clears throat> this includes the situation in northeast uh, Syria. We had an in-depth uh, discussion yesterday. While allies have different views, we agree that we must build on the significant reduction in violence to make progress in our efforts to find a political solution to the conflict in Syria. That we need to maintain commitment to our missions and operations in the region, and that we must safeguard the gains we have made in the fight against our common enemy, ISIS. I welcome uh, the proposal. No, it is important that we continue uh, exploring all means to achieve a sustainable solution on the ground. In this respect, I welcome the proposal from the German Defence Minister for a safe zone and increased international uh, involvement. We also discussed, uh, together with our partners, the European Union, Finland and Sweden, NATO's response to hybrid threats and our work to increase uh, national resilience. Allies agreed an update to our baseline requirement for civilian telecommunications, including 5G. These uh, requirements include the need for thorough risk and vulnerability assessments, including to identify and mitigate cyber threats, as well as the consequences of foreign ownership, control or direct investment. This is important because next generation telecommunications will affect every aspect of our society, from transportation to healthcare to education, as well as our military operations. We also addressed uh, NATO's missions and operations from the Western Balkans uh, to the Middle East. And we assessed our progress in increasing the readiness of our forces. To keep our people safe, we need to be able to move our forces quickly whenever required. So today, ministers welcome that we are now able to move planes across Europe with priority handling, something we call rapid air mobility. Allied aircraft supporting NATO missions will be given NATO call sign and they will receive priority handling by air traffic control in Europe. This was made possible thanks to close cooperation with Eurocontrol, which handles the flow of all uh, air traffic over Europe. Today, we also discussed uh, the progress uh, the Alliance is making on burden sharing. We see a clear positive trend. This is the fifth, year, um, fifth consecutive year of uh, increased defence spending across European allies and Canada. By the end of next year, those allies will have added a cumulative total of 100 billion US dollars. But we still need to do more, and this will be one of the main issues we'll address as we prepare for the leaders' meeting uh, in uh, London. This ministerial has helped to lay the ground for the meetings, uh, meeting of NATO leaders in London in December. Together we are working to keep our alliance strong and secure. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Juliet, second row. 
Thank you, Secretary General. This is Serkan Demirtas from Hürriyet Daily News, Turkey. And my question will be on the future of the active fence operation, especially after the Italian government has decided to end the deployment of their batteries on Turkish soils. And we are also uh, hearing uh, reports that the, uh, a similar decision may also be taken from the Spanish government, who has a Patriot battery on Turkey and on, on the Injilic base. So did you hear any pledge from any allied country yesterday or today uh, for the substitution of the departure of the uh, Italian batteries or potential departure of the Spanish batteries? Thank you very much. <coughs> NATO allies have, uh, for several years now, um, provided Turkey with what we call assurance measures, different kinds of support, uh, more uh, 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 naval uh, presence, uh, port visits, uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, um, also presence on land, and also, and also uh, uh, augmented uh, Turkish air defenses. Uh, this has been done by rotation between allies, so different allies have prov provided different uh, capabilities uh, over uh, several years, back to 2013. Uh, so, um, uh, the Italian decision uh, is something they made uh, uh, this spring, is a is, uh, uh, is, is result of the fact that they have been there for a long uh, time, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a decision which has been taken uh, several months ago as part of the fact that they have been there for a long time and their mandate uh, is ending by the end of the year. Um, uh, Spain provides uh, Patriot batteries, Italy has uh, provided uh, uh, SAMT uh, batteries. Um, uh, uh, I expect that any extension of the Spanish uh, presence will be taken in consultation with uh, allies and this is part of the normal rotation uh, of uh, allies providing different kinds of assurance measures and, uh, and uh, augmentation of the Turkish air defences. Okay, we'll go to Salam Watanda. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yesterday uh, you mentioned that uh, this ministerial will set grounds for the summit on recommitment on Afghanistan. Um, will there be any changes to the scope and scale of NATO's commitment to Afghanistan with a potential peace deal with the Taliban on the horizon? So what we have seen is that NATO allies and partners are committed to our mission in Afghanistan. And in one way, that's quite impressive that after 18 years, uh, 29 allies and many partners stay committed to the train assist and advice uh, miss, mission in Afghanistan. We do so because uh, we stand in solidarity uh, with Afghanistan, with the people of Afghanistan but also because it is in our interest to make sure that Afghanistan doesn't become once again a platform, a country where international terrorist groups can train, prepare, plan terrorist attacks on our own countries. So we are in Afghanistan to protect ourselves, uh, to make sure that we don't see anything similar to what happened uh, back in 9-11 uh, 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 against the United States. Uh, and that's the reason why we are committed, and that's the reason why Heads of state reconfirmed uh, that commitment uh, uh, at the summit uh, uh, last year. Uh, why actually all allies and partners did that uh, today in the meeting. And not only did they say that they are committed, but allies and partners uh, committed forces, troops, trainers, advisors to the Afghan uh, security forces to help them fight international terrorism, uh, fight the Taliban, and uh, 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 to stabilize their own uh, country. Having said all that, of course, we have constantly adjusted the, the size and the, uh, and, uh, and, and the exact numbers of troops we have in Afghanistan. Uh, that's part of uh, uh, the constant work we have to do to optimize the, uh, the mission. Uh, and we will continue to do that, uh, also to make sure that we have a sustainable mission. Uh, so, uh, numbers may go a bit up and a bit down, as they have done before, but there is a very strong commitment uh, uh, across the lines and from partners to continue to support Afghanistan, uh, because we also strongly believe that the only way to reach a credible peace deal is to send a very clear message to uh, Taliban that they will not win on the battlefield. They have to sit down and not only talk, but actually make real compromises for a real and credible uh, peace deal. Okay, Tolo. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary General. I am Hamid from One TV. Uh, how much the ISIS is trade in Afghanistan? It is serious because yesterday you also mentioned about that that NATO will not let the Daesh to become power in Afghanistan and take safe havens. And how much it is serious in Afghanistan after the post peace process when the NATO and US and Afghan reach an agreement with the Taliban? Uh, if I understood the question right, it was about the po ISIS in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so <coughs> that just underpins or underscores the importance of uh, the NATO mission in Afghanistan. Uh, because we have successfully been able to fight and defeat um, Daesh or the fiscal caliphate in Iraq and Syria. And of course, we don't want that caliphate to uh, be re-established in Afghanistan. We see that uh, uh, ISIS is really trying to get a foothold in Afghanistan. They have been responsible for some horrendous attacks and violence against civilians in Afghanistan. Uh, and of course, we don't want them to, uh, to, to, to really get uh, a platform in Afghanistan. So that just adds to the reason why it is important that we continue and uh, that we are, why we are committed to our uh, mission in Afghanistan to help the Afghan security forces uh, fight uh, ISIS in Afghanistan and uh, make sure they don't establish a caliphate uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan. Tolo. Thank you very much, uh, Miraqa Popal from Tulu News Afghanistan. Uh, how much is the problem of uh, corruption is serious in Afghanistan? Uh, about two months ago, U.S. upheld about $160 million to Afghan government. And also, there are serious allegations against the uh, President Ghani's team. They have misused some uh, funds uh, received from world community in the election campaign. How much is uh, the, this uh, problem is serious? Um, corruption is a serious problem in Afghanistan. And that's also the reason why we have raised that uh, issue again and again. And also uh, why uh, we are uh, providing support to Afghanistan, partly by providing trainers. Uh, and we have made a lot of progress in building the Afghan army and security forces. We have to remember that not so long ago, uh, NATO had, had over 140,000 combat troops in the combat operation in Afghanistan. Now we have uh, uh, roughly uh, uh, 16,000 in the train assist and white uh, mission, and it's the Afghan forces who are now responsible for security in their own country. So we have made a lot of progress in modernizing uh, training, helping the Afghans to, to take responsibility for their own country. So we provide support with trainers, but we also provide support with funding. And of course, therefore, it's extremely important to fight corruption. And uh, we do that partly by always insisting on transparency, uh, by making sure that we always do whatever we can to make sure that the f money and the funding is really allocated to the purposes uh, they are meant to uh, finance. And also by working together, for instance, with uh, the World Bank uh, and other international institutions, they also participated in the meeting today to make sure that we do this in the best possible way in a country which struggles with, uh, with uh, corruption. Uh, we also uh, work with Afghanistan to modernize the defense and security institutions. And of course, by doing that, we also help to establish procedures, um, uh, uh, mechanisms uh, to uh, fight uh, corruption. Okay. Guardian, please. Uh, hi, I'm Dan Saber from The Guardian. Um, you, you referred uh, earlier in your remarks, you're working in the German proposal, the uh, initiative for perhaps an international uh, deployment of some sort in, in Syria. Um, is there enough detail on that, do you think, for that to be sort of practical? Um, I don't know, you were in the discussion. Uh, do you feel that that, that that proposal is going to progress? So I, uh, I discussed this uh, proposal with, um, with uh, the, the, uh, the German Defence uh, Minister, Annegret uh, kramp karrenbauer and uh, she also discussed that with uh, other allies during the uh, meeting. I think we all uh, welcome, uh, and I welcome, uh, proposals that can help us make progress um, uh, uh, on the ground in uh, northern uh, Syria. Um, and uh, we welcome the fact that we have seen a decrease in violence, but we need to build on that to create a more lasting and sustainable uh, solution for uh, Syria and uh, the northeast of uh, Syria. 
and therefore I welcome her proposal to look into possibilities of an international uh, safe zone and also for uh, increased uh, international uh, engagement. Then it still remains some work to be done uh, on the many different details and of course or to, to garner or, or to collect the necessary political uh, support. But again, the present situation in northern Syria is not sustainable. Uh, and the international community has a responsibility to try to address all the challenges, the threats we see in northern Syria, and therefore I welcome initiatives and ideas on how we can uh, do that in a coordinated uh, way as the international community. Washington Post, at the back. Hi, thank you. Uh, Michael Greenbaum from the Washington Post. Uh, Secretary General, the, the Pentagon is considering a plan to send tanks and troops back into Syria to help secure oil fields and potentially help the Kurdish forces there. Would you consider that to be a positive step? And how would it affect um, alliance security interests for the uh, U.S. to go back and forth on a Syria strategy in this way? Thank you. NATO is part of the global coalition to defeat Daesh. Uh, we work with our ally, uh, Turkey, uh, uh, in that operation, uh, and Turkey has been extremely important in, in fighting Daesh and enabling the progress we have made uh, uh, defeating or liberating uh, the, uh, the territory that uh, Daesh controlled, both uh, in Syria and uh, Iraq. Uh, we provide support to the coalition, also with our AWACS uh, uh, planes, and uh, we are on the ground in, uh, in Iraq with the training mission. We are not on the ground in uh, northern Syria. And, uh, and therefore, I have always been careful about uh, commenting exactly on how different allies are operating on the ground in northern Syria. I uh, can just reconfirm that NATO is committed uh, to fight our common enemy, uh, ISIS. We will continue to play an active role, uh, NATO and NATO allies, in the global coalition. Uh, we will provide trainers to our training mission in uh, Iraq, as well as Afghanistan, which is also relevant because that's also about fighting ISIS. We will work for a political solution in uh, northern Syria, uh, but uh, NATO will not... Uh, uh, there, there has been no call for a, a NATO deployment of uh, troops in uh, northern Syria, and therefore I will refrain from commenting on how uh, uh, different NATO allies or the United States is... is, is, is is uh, con uh, conducting their uh, activities uh, in northern Syria. Doug Bladet, lady at the back. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the NATO operation in uh, in Afghanistan, as well as the NATO supported uh, operation in Syria, is about fighting terrorism and projecting stability. Now, the United States had withdrawn the forces from Syria. Are you worried that the same thing will happen in Afghanistan, that the uh, United States will, will, will withdraw forces and leaving the responsibility uh, to the European allies? Or, and what will the consequences uh, be if that would be the case? The situation in northern Syria and the situation uh, in Afghanistan is very, uh, they are very different uh, because uh, 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 NATO has never, there never been a, a, a NATO mandate or, a, or, a, or a, a NATO mission in northern Syria. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but that's a totally different thing when it comes to Afghanistan, because we are in Afghanistan as a direct result of 9-11. Uh, we have been there because we agreed uh, also to evoke Article uh, 5 uh, after the attack on uh, NATO in uh, in, uh, on, on, on the United States in, 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 in 2001. And we are there as a result of an attack on the United States. Uh, so uh, I think to compare uh, the NATO mission in Afghanistan with the presence of some allies, but not many, uh, in uh, northern Syria, that's two totally different things. Uh, and, and the United States has reiterated again and again that they stay committed to the uh, mission in Afghanistan. Um, uh, and we have also, but, but, but at the same time, it was stated by ministers in this meeting again and again that we went into Afghanistan together, we make decisions on our uh, presence there together, and when the time is right, we will leave together. Uh, we, 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 we don't want to stay in Afghanistan longer than necessary, but at the same time, if we leave too early, the price can be very high. 
because then, uh, first of all, it will uh, also the, the people of Afghanistan will, 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 will suffer if you have a new Taliban uh, Sharia uh, regime in uh, Afghanistan. Second, we will suffer because it will, it, it will weaken us in our uh, common fight against the common enemy, international terrorism, ISIS. And, uh, and therefore, that's a totally different thing. We will continue to adjust to assess uh, the, uh, the, the, the mission uh, and, and make necessary adjustments. But we are very committed, and the United States has re restated again and again that they are, of course, also committed to, an, to a mission which is what actually triggered by an attack on the United States. Deutsche Welle, second row, please. <coughs> Thank you very much, Yuri uh, Shekot Secretary General, you said that ministers today updated uh, these requirements uh, for the civil preparedness for the civil infrastructure in telecommunications. So could you please explain what, what, what is new in those baseline requirements? And uh, um, the second part to it, are there any uh, concrete companies mentioned there like Huawei? Thank you very much. So, NATO decided uh, a few years ago to have what we call, also to, to step up our effort to make sure uh, that uh, all allies uh, uh, are resilient. Uh, because Article 3 of our founding treaty states clearly that allies have to be resilient. It's partly about having the necessary military forces, but also about being resilient and protecting civilian infrastructure. Based on that, we developed uh, some years ago uh, baseline requirements, seven different baseline requirements for different kinds of civilian infrastructure, including energy, uh, transportation, and so on. What we have done today is to agree revised and updated uh, baseline requirements for telecommunications, including 5G. And what is new is that since the techno technological development is moving so fast, just to update them these uh, guidelines or, or requirements to reflect the technological change is a major undertaking. And we have had some of our best experts working on this for some time. Uh, and based on their advice, their recommendations, their ministers agreed, updated uh, guidelines. They're quite detailed and, uh, and, uh, and quite uh, technical. But the main message is that uh, and, and for instance, the old guidelines didn't address 5G at all. Uh, because that was, in a way, before 5G was uh, so much uh, uh, a part of our modern societies. Now 5G is part of this. And uh, the main message is that all allies need to have uh, uh, thorough risk uh, assessments, including uh, uh, the necessary mitigation measures, uh, procedures in place to protect against cyber uh, attacks, and also uh, assessments of the risks related to foreign ownership, um, uh, control, uh, and uh, many other aspects uh, of uh, potential vulnerabilities related to telecommunications in general and 5G networks uh, in, in, in particular. These guidelines is not about a specific uh, country or a specific company, but they also um, establish some requirements which we expect all allies uh, to meet, uh, because we are dependent as a military alliance that civilian infrastructure, including 5G, is working in peace time, in crisis, and in conflict. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you. Thank you. All the submissions.